This video is going to be about the definition of work, the definition of energy, and how they connect. The definition of energy is that it's a measurement of the amount of work an object can do, the total amount of work that an object can do. There are different forms of energy because there are different reasons why an object can do work, apply a force across a displacement. However, all the forms of energy are still energy. They're all different ways of measuring the same thing, the ability to do work. Energy is a scalar, like work, it has a size but no direction. The variable for energy is capital E, and the unit of energy, like work, is capital J for joule. To illustrate what I mean by energy, I'm going to imagine that we have a blue box that we're going to do some work on, and another object that has energy inside of it that can do work on the blue box. I'm going to imagine, for example, that this orange box has 40 joules of energy inside of it. I'm going to pretend that we don't know exactly where these 40 joules of energy are coming from, you just have to know that this thing has 40 joules of energy. So the reason I'm doing this is to show you what it means to have those 40 joules of energy. Basically, for that orange box to have 40 joules of energy means that it can do exactly 40 joules of work on the blue box. It can't do more than that based on its situation, but it can do 40 joules of work. So as an example, if this orange box can apply a force of one newton on the blue box, that means that it could apply that force of one newton for 40 meters, because 40 times one is equal to 40 joules, and that's the equation for work. So it could move like this if the orange box is applying one newton on the blue box. If the orange box is applying two newtons on the blue box, that means it could push it for 20 meters, because again, the work is the force times the displacement, so that's two newtons times 20 meters, which is equal to 40 joules. So both of these things are possibilities. We don't know exactly which one will happen when the orange box hits the blue box, that depends on other factors in our situation, but all of these are possible because the orange box contains 40 joules. If the orange box put 4 newtons on the blue box, that means it could push it 10 meters, because 4 times 10 is equal to 40, so again it would be doing 40 joules of work. So I think you can see the pattern here. This actually also gives us a new definition of work. Because energy is a measurement of how much work an object can do, the object loses energy when it does work. So as an example, we can imagine that this orange box is applying 10 newtons on the blue box, and it has 30 joules of energy inside of it. You can see that so far, before anything has started to move, the total work done is zero, it hasn't moved any displacement yet. But if the orange box moves the blue box forward by one meter, it's done 10 joules of work. So that means that if it could do 30 joules before, and then it did 10, it can now only do 20 joules of work. And then if we move it another meter, we can see that this blue box has been pushed forward two meters by 10 newtons of force, so the total work done is 20. And if at the beginning the orange box could put 30 joules of work on an object and it's put 20, now it only has 10 left. So at the very end right here, the total work done is 30 joules, so that means that there's no energy left in the orange box. It's done all of the work that it can do on the blue box. So you'll notice that the work done is equal to the change in energy of the orange box. By the time 20 joules of work have been done by the orange box, the orange box's energy has changed by negative 20 joules. So work is equal to the change in energy of an object. Here's an example of using that equation. A box has 80 joules of energy, and if we use a rope at a 60 degree angle that applies a 100 newton force to drag it 10 meters across the floor, how much energy does it have after this event? So if we drag it that far, I can see that the component of the force adjacent to the displacement is going to be 50 because it's cosine of 60 degrees, which is 1 half times the force, which is 50 times 10 meters. So the work done is 500 joules. So that means that if this box starts with 500 joules, then the final energy is going to be its initial energy plus the change. So it went from 80, added 500, and so the total is 580 joules. That's how much energy it ends with. So the work done on an object, the parallel force times the displacement, is equal to the change in energy of the object. You'll notice an interesting pattern here. Because of Newton's third law, if one object does positive work on another, the other object does the same amount of negative work on the first. So because of Newton's third law, if the orange box is putting 10 newtons to the right on the blue, the blue is putting 10 newtons to the left on the orange. So if they're moving to the right, the orange box is supplying positive work to the blue, and the blue is supplying the exact same amount of negative work to the orange. 
So because work is change in energy, this means that whenever one object loses energy, the other object gains the exact same amount of energy. So if you observe the picture that I've made, after one meter, the orange box has lost 10 joules of energy because it did 10 joules of work, and the blue box gained 10 joules of energy because it had 10 joules of work done on it. And then after two meters, the orange box is down to 10 and the blue box is up to 20. And then finally, the orange box is zero and the blue box is 30. So you'll notice that the total energy is remaining the same. So because of Newton's third law, and because whenever one object gains that much energy, the other object must lose the exact same amount of energy, energy cannot be created or destroyed. So it's another conserved quantity. So the law of conservation of energy says that energy can never be created or destroyed, only transferred from one object to another or transformed from one type of energy to another type of energy. So this is a little bit different than momentum. In momentum, there aren't different types of momentum. It's just m times v. But with energy, there are a lot of different types of energy. There are different reasons why an object can apply a force over a time. But even though there are different types, the total amount of energy in a situation, as long as it's a closed system, remains constant. It remains the same. And the total amount of energy in the universe has never gone up or down. Just as a reminder, a quantity that is conserved can never be created or destroyed, only transferred or transformed. And these are the quantities that are conserved in physics. So far we've gone through momentum and energy, and we've also touched on mass not being created or destroyed. So like I said, there are different types of energy because there are different reasons why an object has the ability to do work. However, all types of energy measure the same quantity, how much work an object can do. In the next few lectures, we'll talk about these specific types of energy in detail.